made speeches to the Council of Foreign Relations before um, in New York when we were talking about issues of kind of national intelligence, a lot of energy uh, uh, work, because I passionately believe if we're not energy independent, we will be entangled in the world. Uh, and the Biden administration is driving that down on purpose. So you pay more for your gas, by the way. And now we're also energy. In the President of the United States had to go to Saudi Arabia and beg for oil. We have oil. By the way, some great technology coming out on getting into shale wells. And it doesn't require the water that it does today, which will be a fundamental game changer for the United States. Uh, I, I'm pretty excited about it. They're just going out for their first fundraising round to come in uh, to be able to, do, uh, to get energy on shale. So that's the kind of thing I went up and gave speeches. I, I spoke to a lot of different kind of groups. And I believe, by the way, you should speak to groups you disagree with. So That's the only way we're going to grow our numbers. So you don't support them or you do? I, I, don't, I don't have a, an opinion either way other than I spoke to them. This is for the sheriff. Um, I'd really like to know what you can do to help us secure our elections here in Michigan. I worked the primary and they have a new machine and you just scan your driver's license and then it shows up in the electronic polling which can be cyber screwed up. I'm not a tech person. But what can you do to help us? Because I think that you are the sheriff and you're the most important person here in a lot of ways. So how can we help you to protect our elections in Michigan? Well, I mean, I think one of the best ways is to have a group of elected officials that pass laws that deal with election integrity and security, including identification. I can't enforce a law that doesn't exist, right? So if they come in and, and they don't have to show identification or prove who they I understand are. that, but they, they flip it over and they do the affidavit, but they do have to be citizens. How do we determine that with a driver's license? Can't we change the driver's license so that it is enhanced for citizens or something? Well, right now, unless you're legally present in Michigan, you, maybe Bruce Johnson, Secretary of State, I don't think you can get a driver's license unless you're legally present. They're giving them to they're them. Well, they may be getting them fraudulently, but that's a different question. No. So... Okay, nice question. Um, for Mike Rogers, um, I'd like to go back to the um, question about the uh, police state that we find ourselves living in um, in the United States today. Uh, I know you addressed this a little bit earlier, but we have uh, all kinds of J6 um, people who, political prisoners who are being persecuted. We have the 16 electors from the state of Michigan who are um, being prosecuted with um, felonies. But we have we have attorneys who are being gone after. Uh, right now, there's a, a big case, I don't know if you're familiar with it, with Stephanie Lambert in Michigan. And um, her crime apparently is uh, going after election fraud. So I'd like to know your thoughts on that. I'd like to know what you have done or what you will do um, to change the status of the police state that we find ourselves living in. Yeah, so, and I've, and I've said uh, often on the trail, uh, if you assault the police officer, I believe you should go to jail, number one. But number two, what we're seeing with the Biden administration is this two-tiered justice system that I have just never quite seen in my lifetime. As somebody who dedicated my life to law enforcement, risked my life going through doors to arrest Colombian drug dealers and gangsters, I I've just never quite seen something like this. Um, and when you look at what happened to the president in New York, unbelievable, unprecedented, and we can't let it stand. And so we have to get after this two-tiered system of justice. The best thing that I can do when I get to the Senate, uh, and this is the good news, I have the credibility to drag people in by their collars, and I know how to do it as a former chairman, uh, to drag people in from the Department of Justice and the FBI to put this thing straight, including this new analytical core that worries me a lot. They're the ones that are coming up with the things that you just is mind-blowing to me that you can pick Catholics and say Catholics might be a problem, or you can pick people who shop at Cabela's as a problem. We've got to get our we've got to get that turned around and back. 
And again, one of the ways I think you do that after a good, a good old-fashioned administrative cleaning of personnel is get them refocused on the problems that we know are affecting us. Distri the distribution network of fentanyl is killing Americans every single day in this country. We've got to be really aggressive about refocusing them on those actions. Remove, not refocus. Remove them. Take the leadership. Go ahead, remove the plan. leadership, but refocus the Bureau's effort. I've listened to five other candidates. They all share a similar message. So other than your team in uh, Congress, House Intelligence Committee, and the thing following that, other than Donald Trump's support, what's going to set you apart from the other candidates that are running in the state of Michigan? And for the U.S. Senate? Yeah, no, great question. So in the last few years, I've been doing cybersecurity, mostly. Um, investing and, and being a part of small companies. One does deep and dark web uh, trawling for uh, uh, compromised credentials, meaning it looks for your password being for sale in the dark web. Uh, as well as companies that deliberately target Chinese, Russian, Iranian attacks coming into private networks in the United States. If you look at the range of threats coming at the United States of America, I've never seen anything like it. One, again, weakened military, maybe the weakest commander-in-chief I think I've ever seen. Uh, he makes, this guy makes uh, you know, Jimmy Carter you know, look like Patton. Uh, I mean, it's unbelievable. That presents a new whole risk for us. Uh, and the Chinese are doing it in, in multi-layers. There's only one candidate that's done a couple of things. One candidate took a Democrat seat and made it a Republican seat when I ran. Uh, I actually took Debbie Stabenow's seat. What is the irony of that? Uh, when she ran for the United States Senate. Um, and I won by 111 votes. I'm not going to do that this time. We're going to get a few more votes this time. Uh, promise. Uh, <clears throat> number one. 